going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 222. Adam, you were excited for 222. I was excited, and now I'm less excited. You're less excited? Because you reminded me of it being 222. <laughs> well, this is the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. We're part of the Pokemon Professor Network. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022, episode 222 on 2022. I'm Ken Pescatore. That's Adam Tuttle. Hi, Adam. Hey. How are you, Ken? What's going on? Shout out to everyone in the chat early. What's going on, Ranger? How are you? Justin, uh, he's in the chat, are, too. Uh, we are live streaming this recording. Pure Lighter's so in the house. If you're listening on an audio platform, you can jump over to our Twitch or YouTube to check out the archive of the VOD. And if you're watching this uh, live right now, you could always catch up later this week on audio format. Wherever your podcasts are sold... <laughs> delivered free free to, to <laughs> syndicated to, to well adam this past week was go fest big weekend big it weekend was a big trainers. weekend yes a lot of uh a lot of news a lot of stuff to talk about i know you had work so i already feel your pain i want to talk through it and all right see, uh, i'll be see here how your experience was uh we also had the ultra beast and lego came around that was kind of a big shock pretty cool people were pretty excited about it uh, we have Adventure Week, which started today, so we'll kind of run through that. And uh, boy, has it been an adventure. adventure. It has been an adventure, and uh, yeah, has it? I mean, I don't know. I'm still I'm still coming down from GoFest, so we'll, we'll have to see. My back is still hurting from GoFest. My dogs are barking still. Jamal from the Wayspotters podcast is going to join us about halfway through the show, jump on. We're going to do a little Wayfarer talk. I think it would be a good idea to get some first early tips for people that are just getting into Wayfarer of how they can get involved, get started with it. I know it can be kind of daunting and there's a lot to learn. So we'll get some tips straight from Jamal. We've got additional details now on the TCG crossover event within Pigo. So this Ooh. is really exciting. And they made this event just for Adam because it has a Pikachu with a hat. Which I can't be mad at. I want to, but I can't. Why? Because it's promoting the card game. And it's not even a good hat. It's a it's really- It's not. It's not. It it's doesn't even have hat. like the Play Pokemon logo or anything. It's just, when I saw hey, it, look, here's I, three generic like, looking cards. This is bad. I go, this is a this is not an exciting hat in the least. I go, but watch, Adam's going to like it because it's TCG. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. I absolutely knew that was going to happen. Would you say you had- Future Sight. I did have Future Sight, but we also uh, will do a Mega Aerodactyl Raid Guide and Battle Party since that is our Mega Raid through the end of the Adventure Week, which is not a week long. It's five days, right? Yeah. Seven, twelve. Yeah. So, so it's always weird when they do that. But let, let's talk Go Fest. So this past weekend was Global Go Fest, the fourth and the fifth, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday was the big day, the big catch day where the event was popping off, and Sunday was more of a chill raid based day where everyone could kind of rest and still enjoy uh, the the game, whether you were playing in person or remotely, or if you did like me and you you played in person, but you did a lot of sitting on Sunday because my feet were hurting so bad from Saturday. But Adam, start us off. Let us know how it was for you because I know you had work. What was that like? Were you, were you kind of like FOMO in the whole day? Yeah. I had it in my mind Aww. because I had woken up. I I wasn't going in until like my the two o'clock shift, but I'm supposed to report at one forty five. Like that's the time I'm supposed to clock in. So I had to leave my house because it's like an hour give or take with traffic. So it's like I never know, especially with the summertime. It's gonna it's getting like hard like longer and longer my drive or my commute. So. I basically, after showering, I left my house 12.30. That was too late to leave, wasn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was fine. So wait, so wait, did you play from 10 to 12.30? So I, I had woken up and like I started playing. And it took me a half hour to realize that I didn't have my incense on. Oh, no. But, like, I wasn't moving. So, like, it, I, I don't know. I was like, oh, I, I'm not losing anything. Well, it wouldn't have mattered because stationary incense was boosted for Again, spawns every 45 these things seconds. I didn't. In my head, I was so confused. Oh, because poor Adam. No, no, no. Like, because <laughs> I just, I didn't prepare for it. I didn't have any post or any 
thing that like I wanted to like share with the world and like get them hyped for GoFest because like it was already happening. Guy had left work. People were sending Axu invites, so it's like this was like the day before. It, it just didn't feel like I was prepared mentally, and so it felt like a community day that like I couldn't necessarily play. I think the big difference here, right, is that this was an eight-hour event versus a community day, which is now stripped down to three hours. Yes, but we had been given it for six, so like that's the kind of feel that it was, It was, you know, I don't know. That That's just where my mind was at. And, you know, with the Go Plus just disconnecting all day, it really, I was like, this. it's not really worth this much anxiety. I was like, if I didn't have the Go Plus, I would be like scratching my skin. Like I had to like go to the bathroom multiple times to just, just to connect it. And it, so it was just frustrating. Did you update your iOS to 15.5? Uh, is that what Bam. The... that That's your issue right there. Right. So whenever there's an iOS update, it typically fucks around with Adventure Sync and the Go Plus. And I always see like constant disconnects whenever there's an iOS thing. And look, this could be my tinfoil hat thing, right? Who knows? But I've noticed the trend that whenever there's an iOS update, it has some kind of impact on the connectivity of Go Plus and the ability for the device to stay connected. So it would connect fine. You'd look good. You'd catch, you know, catch, spin, do whatever. But then within moments, it would just disconnect to where, like, you get the press and you get the little reassurance buzz where you're like, all right, I'm connected. Yep. You would just press and, like, you're like, what the hell? Why Why am I disconnected again? So I, I think that a lot of people are scr- struggling with that because they had not upgraded to 15.5. But again, maybe that's just me. Nia Lego was released 10 a.m. on Saturday. Did you have the ability to... So the first one I actually got invited to, again, after I got out of work, Lachlan from the Wayspotters podcast sent me a... And I call it Nihiglio. That's just what I've always called it. That's, yeah, that's way I too know, many syllables. I know, I know, but that's what I call it. Nihiglio. <laughs> but... Yeah, you invited me to one, and I was like, one and done. Like, that's just what it felt like. I was like, okay. And then I hadn't looked at the game for most of the day. So I had guests that were in line buying stuff, and they had their phones down, and they're like, oh, this game is stressing me out. I'm just trying to catch these shinies, and the things just keeps just despawning, and I'm trying to do this and this. And I was like, I feel you. I think what they were really saying was, I would like some chocolate, please. But what you heard was, this this device keeps disconnecting. No, 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 no. But they were saying that. So I was like, they're stressed out. And then I could see on their phone, I saw the raid for the Nihiglio. I was like, hey, if you want to do that, just let me know. I was like, I got a guy in the kitchen that would also like to join. <laughs> so I'm That's like, so funny. secretly just like jump in, just start doing it. <laughs> But it's just wow. like after a couple of those, like on my break, I got to sit and play. And that's when I caught my shiny Axu. So I was like, okay, I got a shiny Axu. I can feel accomplished. So wait a second. How many raids did you do? Because uh, I, I know people doing 100 plus raids with no shiny Axu. So. I probably did like 16 or 17. Maybe, oh, okay. maybe 20, 20 max, but it was definitely under that. And this was all on your lunch break? Was this like a power lunch no, break? No, these were like I, you know, every chance I could. Okay. All right. No. Check, so check I, downstairs for something. Uh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta step outside for a second. It's like I've <laughs> suddenly started smoking cigarettes and I need to go have a smoke break. <laughs> but it was hard because it was like there was a line out the door. I couldn't catch things. Like I knew that my thing was disconnected, so I was like having like anxiety with that and being like oh this is ridiculous a little stressful but then i did another axu raid and got the hundo so i was like wow are you you know you go on twitter and that's literally all you see is just people trading their shinies getting the lucky shundo uh shout out to lee snaps (laughs) just and then like everybody else just hundo axu hundo axu hundo and i was like i don't feel like part of the club unless i got one or a shiny one so it's like i got part of both clubs The remote rating notwithstanding, were you able to, like, actually play on foot, get some kilometers in? No. Wow. Okay. Wow. So you had a really limited experience. And this was Saturday. Yeah, there was just too much going on in the morning. Like, Saturday morning, like, I only got to see Ashton for so long. So it's like, 
I, I prioritize like making breakfast and like you like I was still playing, but you know, trying to multitask, you know, breakfast and watching something and like trying to like entertain him and it, you know, it, so it's it's just it was just hard because like then I had to take care of myself and get myself ready to work and then I had to go to work and then driving. I could barely catch anything while driving, so I was like, "Oh, look at that torkel! Oh, it's it ran! Oh, look at wow. that! Oh, it ran! Oh, look at that! It ran!" All right. So be- before we get into Sunday, I'll kind of recap my Saturday. So I well, hold on, hold on, hold on, just so I can officially say like the recap about shinies that I got because I only got like four, I think five, maybe. Yeah, yeah I, got, well, I got five. So it, I got the what? Axu. My first shiny was the Piplup. I got the Giraffe Rig. And then I got a Slackoth and a ball toy. I already had those three, but not the giraffe rig. And then I got the axe. Wow. So that was like, okay. What's up, Podgy Panda? Yeah, Podgy Panda, what's up? I was fortunate. I did not have the struggles you did on Saturday. I was able to play the whole day. And uh, I hooked up with Coach Kev, came by the house. And I went down to Red Bank with him to play with the Red Bank group. And I think like our feet touched down you know, probably like 9.30 a.m., so we are able to power up some stops, kind of just get get ourselves mentally prepared, communicate with the, the local group so we could all get together. 10 o'clock hit, we were off to the races, and for Kev, it was an interesting thing because, you know, he's used to playing, you know, he plays the game a lot, but he's not necessarily used to being a foot soldier, you know, he's kind of kind of on the car grind kind of thing. foot clan. And I told him, I told him ahead of time, I go, bro, you better... You better bring some icy hot and some <laughs> some Motrin, <laughs> I go because I'm letting you know now the Red Bank group doesn't play, and ten o'clock it's on and we're not going to stop till till the cows come home. Six oh five. So ten o'clock <laughs> rolls in and uh, we just we just went for it immediately. And something I wanted to ask you about. I mean, I know that you you were probably even feeling this double because you couldn't couldn't actually play but that was like that initial feeling of being overwhelmed remember when we had Kanto tour and the Johto tour and you have this today view that just seems like a mile long and all this crazy stuff to try to manage and and be aware of and I think they did an okay job kind of breaking it down to just the four habitats so it was just kind of make sure you catch everything yeah it was like a smaller a smaller amount of things to scroll down but what I noticed was I kind of got lost on the global challenges. Like I was scrolling past it every time to get to the collection challenges that I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. I don't even, I can't even say that I, I looked at them. I thought the initial reaction from the community was these shiny rates are broken. I'm not getting any shinies. It's two hours into the event. I have one or two hours in, I have two. We, I remember talking about that specifically during the, the tour events because there were longer events, six, eight-hour events, and this isn't a community day. So I think that the culture that Niantic has built around the community days has spoiled us to the point where when we don't get that 1 in 25 shiny rate, you, you immediately think, like, the game is broken. Like, oh, Niantic screwed up with the shiny rates. Like, it's just not good. So I, I think that we're, we're too conditioned to community day being the standard for shiny rate during an event. Right, like we're in adventure week now. We don't expect there to be a one in twenty-five shiny chance, but for a destination style event like a community day, it feels more like you should have a higher rate, even though that's not necessarily the case, and they don't necessarily call it out. Right, it's still like yeah, a, if you're lucky, exactly kind of thing. And for me, I wasn't mad. Like it was more or less like I just wanted a new shiny, something I hadn't gotten before, and I got one or two, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, I was happy with it. So. I think what I felt during the Kanto tour and Johto tour that I was feeling here was anytime someone did get a shiny, even if it was a shitty one, like my first shiny, like an hour and 20 minutes in was a Chimchar. I was like, really? This is how the game's going to do me? You know, like, even though it was a crappy shiny from my perspective, like it felt special because I had to play for an hour and a half or whatever to get it. So I felt I put in my work. And anytime someone got a shiny, you get that that call out that, oh, my God, I got a shiny kind of feeling that that dose of serotonin that everyone in the group can then feel because they get you get excited for the people you're playing with. And during the community day, that kind of gets lost because people are getting, you know, 50 shinies. 
So I liked the shiny economy during this event because every shiny you got through the events felt a little bit more special. But then by the time you were at the end of the event, I saw the culture of everyone I was playing with change from, oh my God, this shiny rate is broken. I'm not getting enough shinies to like, oh shit, I did get 12. This was a good day. This was a good haul. <laughs> but let, let's let's run through what we saw for the event here. Go from there. So first of all, Tropius in the in the key art, I think Tropius was one of the coolest things to see in the wild just because it's so big. You don't realize how big the Pokemon is. So when you see it at scale in the wild, that was pretty cool. I want to talk about incense because, like I said, they did boost the incense for stationary to one spawn every 45 seconds. So that was huge, right? That was a, a yeah. nice surprise. I don't want to say that they're exploiting this, but I think this is an okay tool for them to toggle on and off during events. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's a pretty cool thing. Mythical Hitch in the chat saying that uh, it was the first time he got a Tropius Anatorical. That's solid. Dex entries during a big event like that, and they're and they're actually tagged from the event. You know what I mean? Like in your in your log, I think that's really cool. The frustration I had with the incense was this thing they posted about on on Niantic Help, where there was a visual bug that was causing Pokemon that were spawning from an incense or a lure. So when you tap on them, they would kind of just poof away, because. In essence, they're not really there. They had already despawned per the game, but for whatever reason, the the visually they were still on the map. So when you touched on it, they it, they they poofed away. And with, you know, if we scroll down here in the video and look at the incense spawns, right? The ticket only incense spawns. Let's find it. Here we go. It's the good shit. Galarian Weezings, all the shiny unknowns, Torkoal, Axu, Tropius, and Cham. Pan Cham, Ponji Panda, Pan Cham. But look, how fucking frustrating was it when you finally see an unknown, because they were very rare on the incense. And then poof. You click on it and it, it <laughs> disappears. That happens it, so many times. I heard so many sighs of just like, ah, oh, the entire day of people just being so frustrated. And even though it's a minor thing, Right? Like the Pokemon isn't really there. We shouldn't get upset because it was just literally happening for eight hours. I was exhausted by it by the end of the day, where I was just expecting, like, if anything cool popped up on the screen, I was going to lose it. Let's backpedal a little bit and kind of just go through what we had, uh, what we had going on. Obviously, the four different biomes here, it was, it was great as far as we really did get a different feel each hour, every hour that the game. Yeah. It, diversity was really nice. It was really, really good. However, it was clear to my community and the people that I was playing with that they could give two shits about the Tundra biome, like the weakest one of all, like they had no interest. Like when they were like, Oh, we got to pee or we got to eat or we got to do whatever. They're like, we got to wait for Tundra <laughs> to come around. <laughs> That's like where, where everybody wanted to take a break. I did like the diversity, but this seemed like a, a clear, not so great biome out of all of it. Um, do you know anyone that got the shiny, the shiny unknown? I only know JT Valor. JT Valor was the uh, only I did person see, I saw. I saw Master Ball six hundred three. He's from okay. my area. Hella, hella rare, but it was. Uh, I kind of like that, but yeah, we to the point where some people were like, they forgot to turn it on. Bah, bah, bah. But I really like seeing the Galarian Weezings in the wild. That's just, you know, every time it came up, I was like, look at this distinguished gentleman. Like, you know, it's just fun. <laughs> Everyone was having a good time. It was a good vibe. And I think the event won people over as the event went on. So first hour, first two hours, people were like, like, oh, my God, the shiny rates are fucked up. Like, I'm not having a good time. And then... As the event went on, people started getting more acclimated to the rates, and it felt better. And uh, by the end of the event, everyone seemed overwhelmingly positive uh, on it, except the people that didn't get the Axu, who were, like, insanely stressed out. Wah. Because that's really all they wanted. But, um, yeah, Mythical Hitch in the, in the chat said, no no new shiny in the Tundra. Yeah, that, that, that makes it oh, not when so you exciting. shiny? Yeah, like, you know, like, I, yo, I got, I got two Numo. I got so I was able to get the evolution there. I did not get the giraffe rig. I got one shroomish, so that was pretty that was pretty exciting. 
Uh, I did get two shiny Aksu, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. So that was that was really really awesome. Uh, I had a great time raiding the Aksu. It's fun to to have that. Now, another bit of feedback I heard from a lot of people was, "Where's the event research?" Right? There was no event specific research. So typically, you'd have certain spawns locked behind the research that are the if you're lucky spawns or whatever. We didn't have any of that. So it, I don't want to say it felt jarring, but the encounters that we were getting from the events were just like your, your normal seasonal field research. So those spawns didn't always align with what was going on in the game with the biomes, with the habitats. So that was a little funky. Um, but other than that, it was awesome. Now, they kind of dropped the bomb on us like, hey, everybody, uh, Nihilego is out. And that was like a nice switch up even though Sunday was the raid day, they dropped it on Saturday to kind of just give this different feel and a different vibe. And I thought the uh, the whole story portion of it was absolutely awesome. I, I, it was nice not seeing the professor, you know, there. And yeah. we actually had uh, had the Nihilego. And it was cool to see the, the, like, the wormhole instead of the egg. I thought that was pretty, that see, was pretty fun. And that's the thing. That's what I was it was talking about when I saw at the register. I was looking at their phone and could see that the like the timer and I was like, oh, that must be like a visual glitch or something. And I didn't realize that it was a timer going down until Nihiglio appeared. Yeah. So it's it, not it's, an egg. I didn't know that. So it was it was cool. It was an easy raid. You could you could pretty much take care of it with three people, no problem. So it was fun to be able to just knock these out and, you know, with all the extra XP and all that kind of stuff, it was just, it was really great. And like I said before, the global challenges kind of got lost on me because I wasn't paying attention to them. I was just going through worried about, you know, you have that at the top of every hour for the first cycle of habitats. It was just like stress to get the collection challenge done. Like I knew that even if I didn't pay attention, I would have caught everything, but I was still stressed out about it to yeah. start. You know what I mean? So because of that, I kind of ignored my personal performance or the group's performance on the global challenge. And then all of a sudden you get the, the alert like, Hey, it's active. Great job. Great work. So that was, uh, that was a little funky, but it was nice to get this as a surprise now it comes. So I ended up putting in uh, like almost 27,000 steps on Saturday it was it was a great day to be outside. It was, the weather was awesome here in Jersey, and uh, you know I felt like accomplished as far as getting a good amount of like fitness in, right? Because I was walking the whole day. So we go out to eat in Red Bank right after the event ends. We're doing all our trades. It was great. You know, it was like the true stereotypical IRL experience that Niantic would want. We were like the poster childs. We we're like you know everyone comes. We all meet up. We had one person who's been a lurker in the local Discord for like six months and hasn't talked to anyone shows up. And then by the end of the event, we're all hanging out and having a good time. So like we welcome them into the uh, the physical group. We had people come from out of town that came into our group. And, you know, we're talking. It was just like all the things that all the points that Niantic would want to hit socially. This event pulled off. So after the event, we go out to eat and, you know, we were we were dying of sweat. And uh, it was so nice to sit down and, you know, it was like air conditioned, had fans on and everything. And then like 645, I like stood up to like get up from the table and it was like, oh, yeah, I'm a fucking old man, dude. Like I couldn't move. Like I was I was so beat up. <laughs> I was hurting so bad. I was like, yo, this ride home is going to be terrible. And uh, I felt it like crazy the next day. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm glad they, they do this more chill day on Sunday because one, I didn't think my body would have been able to uh to take it. Mythical Hitch saying two hours of trades after the event would have been clutch. Yeah, it's kind of yo, Duck's feet got an O and U shiny. What? That is insane. I, I only caught like a dozen unknown the entire weekend. Let let alone a shiny, yeah. but that was crazy. But I, I did enjoy the Sunday. It was Enough that I would I could play for like the first four or five hours of just using my free passes. Like that was the that was the best part was I could play from a free to play kind of perspective. I didn't have to put any money out of pocket. I got my raids in, and I was able to still get some steps. And I still did like fifteen thousand steps. 
but I was able to take those breaks, you know, walk from one raid to the next, have a seat, do the raid, kind of shoot the shit, move on to the next one. And it felt like the pacing was really nice as a day two of the event. So I, I really enjoyed it overall. I thought it was uh, just, I don't know, it, in my opinion, this this might have been the, the best virtual event that Niantic has ever done. I think that once you get over the hump of the shiny rate not being the same as Community Day, like, and you swallow that pill, everything's better. Everything is better. And, I, you know, I, I preach on this show, like, I don't like to judge a event's success by how many shinies you get, right? It's a fun metric, yeah. but not, not really, like, necessary. Like, <laughs> I think I got, I don't know, 18, 19 shinies. So it was still 18? a great... 18? Yeah. But, dude, I, I caught... 1200 Pokemon on Saturday. I probably so, got nothing like that. So, I mean, I was, I wasn't doing the shiny check thing. I was catching everything I touched. So it was like, you know, I, I, I played pretty heavy. So it was, it was, it was a lot of fun because I haven't been able to have that dedicated play experience in a long time. So I was fortunate that I was able to do that. But uh, this gets me really excited for the upcoming events, uh, including Adventure Week, because we unlocked all these perks, right? We did all these global challenges. So we have these adva- uh, enhanced events coming out. And I guess we can we can jump right over to Adventure Week because that's where we're at now. And we've got, you know, two brand new Pokemon into the game with their evolutions. So this is this is always a good time. But we're going to be getting a enhanced version of these events thanks to our performance during the global challenges, right? So will we get um, the Aurora Boreal- Borealis in game? Because that's what I really want. I oh, feel like, like as as a skybox, you mean? Yeah, because I mean, like, oh, look that at would it. be cool. Yeah, we should that get would it. be really cool. But uh, you can see here in the blog, and if you're uh, listening to the audio version, if you just look at the blog, there's they actually updated it to say like, hey, great, you know, uh, through your collaboration, you've been able to turn Adventure Week into Ultra Adventure Week. Again, that's the the perks that we unlocked during the, uh, the the global challenges. It says, take a look at all the exciting adventures and bonuses waiting in store. And then it goes through the event and it talks about the unlock. So we did talk about the event last week. We have Tyrant and Nomura making their debuts. As of right now, they're still hidden behind Raid and Eggs. So have you had a chance to see either of these Pokemon on screen yet? Nope. I saw one Tyrant from uh I don't know if it was part of the timed research. I don't know what I don't know what it was, but I, I saw one and phenomenal animation. Phenomenal in game animation it looks really good. The frame rate on it feels really high and it feels natural. Like I have not seen Amora yet, but uh really excited to see these in the game. But We've got double XP for spinning stops, five times XP for spinning a Pokestop for the first time. This is a fantastic way that to encourage travel and encourage people to just like go one town over, right? Like that's all you need to do to take advantage of this bonus. It's just fucking go one town over, go somewhere you've never been. And you could really, really, really stock up here. Uh, and then you have half, half hatch distance as well. Now this is what we have because of the ultra unlock is we have unknown F I've done one raid. Someone overseas invited me to one and you can get the shiny F, which is kind of cool again, but these fucking things elude me like crazy. So who knows? Uh, the raids that we have here, not terribly exciting this week for me. Geodude, Alolan Geodude, Pseudo Wudo, Rog and Rolla, the Unknown F. Uh, we've got Rhydon, Shuckle, Tyranitar, and Agron in three star raids. I did get a Hundo Tyranitar in the wild Ooh. during Go Fest. And the best part about it was we caught it and some we didn't even know we had it. We all had it in our inventory, and someone was about to like do their transfers and they were like, holy shit, I caught a hundo Tyranitar, you know, 531 CP, check your inventory. And we look at, and we all had it. So I was fast catching 100% of everything during the event. So like I fast catch the hundo, not, not knowing it was a hundo. Wow. That Wait, was pretty, it was a Tyranitar? Like, I mean, I'm a, a Larvitar. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I'm looking okay. at Tyranitar on the screen. Yeah. Lar- Larvitar on the screen. Um, so I was just fast catching everything. So I was, I was ecstatic because, I'm trying to build up this this army of mega evolvable Pokemon as Hundos, right? So <laughs> same. I was same. I was very excited, and finally yesterday I hatched a Hundo Magikarp, my first Hundo Magikarp. I'm so excited! Congratulations! Like, on the Zoom call yesterday, we have our patron Zoom call. I pulled my phone up on screen, and immediately 
four hundred and seventy thousand Stardust, boom, I went right to level fifty with it. Just bam, one fucking shot. Uh, I'm so hyped. Immediately Mega Evolved. I've already Mega Evolved it like three times. Like, I don't even care about the cooldown. I'm just using Mega <laughs> Energy like crazy. So, well, that if you was got really it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lachlan in the chat says, Adventure Week is such a great event. It's been off to a great start. Such cool wild spawns like Rampardos. Yo, for real. Rampardos. And let's let's get back to, to, the, uh, to the actual page here. Um, looking at the actual uh, Ultra Unlock Pokemon. And then we have a research day coming on Sunday where Kranidos and Shieldon are going to be in the wild, um, which is phenomenal. They're both great shinies. They're both holdout shinies for a lot of people. And from a PvP perspective, people are constantly trying to build up on Bastidons. And, you know, Rampardos is just an absolute phenomenal rock attacker in PvE. So really, really good Pokemon here. But part of the Ultra Unlock will allow us to have Tyrone and Amora in the wild during this research day, but pay attention to the hours here. So Amora is only going to be available from 11 to 12, and Tyrant will be available from 12 to 1, uh, and then it shifts. There's a second cycle afterwards, so just pay attention to that. But they will be in the wild, which is phenomenal, because previously they were they were research and, raid, and uh, egg-locked, which people were kind of like a little a little sour on. And this this is this Sunday coming up? This is this Sunday coming up. So which as is, you're listening to this, it should be yeah. this weekend. Yep the the last uh, the last day of of the actual adventure week. Um, but we do have some some really solid spawns. I mean, the shiny lineup is pretty awesome. Um, I had a wild Cradilly today, so that was a lot yeah, of fun. Same, yeah, yeah, super cool. I, I definitely enjoy seeing seeing the uh, the evolved forms in the wild. But this is where it gets a little spicy. Seven K eggs, which I hate fucking hatching because they take so long but shiny tortuga shiny archon released in the game uh and they're in seven k's so i guess i gotta i'm gonna be doing some seven k's and uh on top of that the shiny two tortuga or tortuga and archon are easier or at a lower a higher rate in eggs than the tyrant and the amora so i kind of like how they're they're balancing this with like new pokemon versus the shiny chance pokemon I just think that they did a good job balancing here. And when you play in a place like Red Bank or in like New York City, it really goes to show how important field research is to an event. Because when you have an event and you're going after specific Pokemon, that's how you have the agency. Like, I want to get Tyrant, so I'm going to look for the Tyrant research, right? Where you just you don't have to, to hope that you find it in the wild or, or whatever. So... When you don't have, do you a know which which research is the yeah, time? Yeah, I don't, but I'm sure Silk Road does, right? <laughs> so we could just go look on Silk Road. But who in the chat knows? Where, how do you get the Tyrant? Is it the? Uh, I, I I'm sitting on two spin fifteen stops right now. Yo, and they're good event research. I I I saw that the spin fifteen stops, and I was like, yo, this is great. And also the uh, the timed research is phenomenal with the. The walk twenty five k, I was yeah, like, all right, they're yeah. actually putting making it a little challenging. I was like, I'm down for this. I, I think Where are you this at? Is really cool. I'm nowhere, dude. I I I did a walk this morning before the event started. And it's like the event kicks in at ten o'clock. I'm like, I'm like, fuck. I just I just walked like two miles and I didn't get credit for it in the event. But uh, spin twenty five new fossils. What? Spin 25 can either be two of the new Pokemon. All right, so spin oh, okay. 25 stops Sweet. will get you the... Uh, and also oh, the well, mine's walk 15, 5K. Not Shout out to Marty in the chat. Um, yo, chat coming through with all the answers here. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Really appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you give us a follow. And uh, and I don't know. We never, we're not used to like plugging. Like, Give us a follow and turn on notifications. Is that a thing on Twitch? Yeah. Check out the Instagram. <laughs> Look at our social medias. <laughs> But I don't yeah, know. Scan I, that thing in the bottom. The bottom I'm having a here. really good time with <laughs> Adventure Week. I like it. Uh, there's no costume Pokemon for Adam to get mad at. Yes, uh, I'm just so have happy. New Pokemon about that. and new shinies. So positive, uh, positive all the way around. I just think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But um, I, it is 10:40, so I do want to uh, bring, to bring in, in Jamal. I do want to bring in Jamal. Is somebody man. knocking on the door right now? See, he, Jamal is knocking on the door. Jamal, I hope you have your Audacity recording. 
because we're ready to rock and roll. So you could fire that up, and we're going to let you in in about two seconds here. But uh, if you uh, don't know, Way Spotters is the newest podcast on the Pokemon Professor Network. It's all about Niantic Wayfarer and how that applies to Pokemon Go and Pikmin Bloom and Ingress and the whole process of Lightship and that whole platform. And it's a massive, immense rabbit hole. And since the release of this podcast, I've heard more and more Pokemon Go trainers get interested in Wayfarer, which for me is near and dear to my heart. I am a huge fan of uh, nominating. I am a terrible reviewer, which is why I want to spend some more time with Jamal. And Jamal, I'm going to bring you in here. My dude, hey, how are you, Jamal? Jamal? Welcome to Lured Up. What's going on, people? And Ken, of course I've got Audacity running. I am now an official digital content creator, and I'm a pro. That's it. That's <laughs> it, man. That's exciting. That's exciting. So, uh, like, I was just letting everybody know all about Spotters, which is available now on your favorite <laughs> podcast platform. You could also check out Wayspotters.com, which I have pulled up right here. And you can uh, subscribe to the show. And you can also listen to the shows, the feed, directly on Wayspotters.com. So I figured I'd bring you in because we have a lot of people listening because of GoFest. And I figured that this would be a good time to kind of talk about Wayfarer and talk about some quick tips for people that understand what the Wayfarer process is, but is, but I've never tried it. Just what are some some Wayfarer 101 things that we should be aware of or trainers should be aware of if they're going to be entering the world of Wayfarer for the first time? I figure that would be a good place to start. Yeah, I, I, prefer, I prepared some tips. And uh, the first thing you guys should do is is listen every Sunday to the Wayspotters podcast and hear, My man, hear, plug it away. True. hear, hear true. Lachlan and I kind of mix it up and, and talk about uh, the world of Wayfarer. We approach Wayfarer in a couple of different ways, and I think it's really good for the listener to hear the way I look at things and the way Lachlan looks at things. And it's really fun and entertaining show. I have fun doing it. But um, I wanted to break it down for you, Ken and Adam, in, in two different ways. Uh, categories. I wanted to break it down into reviewing category, and I wanted to break it down in a submitting category, if that's fine. So I'll start with the yeah, reviewing sure. category. So if you're going to do Wayfair, obviously, the first thing you need to do is take and pass the Wayfair test. That's first and foremost. So there's a lot of things on Reddit. Uh, there's actually an episode of Wayspotters. If you want to go back and listen to it, it might be episode two or three where we talk about the Wayfair test. So that's number one, first and foremost, take and pass the test. The second thing you want to do, guys, is you want to mentally prepare yourself for sitting down to do some reviews. So think of it like this. Think of it as you're going to do all five sets of your GBO matches right you're gonna sit down and do 20 gbo matches you get some water you get yourself ready you're like i'm gonna do these matches you want to give wayfair that same kind of respect and that same kind of time so you want to sit down and say i'm gonna do at least 25 or 30 reviews to get into the flow right number three what then you want to do is you want to review the criteria you want to make sure you're up to date on what should be approved and what shouldn't be approved so go through the criteria look and see what's going on if you're a little more advanced you can go on to the uh, niantic community page for wayfair and take a look at what some of the posts are there but if you're just getting started review the criteria take a look see what should be a waste spot and what should not be a waste spot then once you get in there, don't rush through the submissions, right? Take 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 your time, slow down, try and understand what the submitter is telling you, both through the photos and also through their nomination, um, what they've submitted for their description and their supplemental information. Read it through, look at the map, look at the other way spots in the area. Take it serious, but have fun. So those would be the quick tips that I would give people who are just starting off reviewing. No, that's that's awesome. And I think that the most important thing you mentioned there was devote the time and give it the time, right? Because sometimes there's things in this game, whether it's when Professor Willow is talking or whatever, that we just want to get <laughs> back we just, to we playing. We just skip, yeah. We just right, we just want to get back to it. I think what kind of separates the culture of Ingress agents that happen to Wayfair or Pigo trainers that happen to do some Wayfair and like the people that are really into Wayfair is the entertainment comes from the process, right? The joy is in the process. Yes, it is. And, you know, you get those rewards. So if it's worth giving the process a shot 
and respecting the process to turn the process into the actual game. That is correct. Right? You and gamify the process where nominate like and I, I love it. And and because of like you know hanging out with you, I do the same thing. If I'm walking down a new street. I see something, I'm immediately looking at it through the lens of like, oh my God, this needs to be a POI in the game. Like, hold on, I'm going to submit. Right. And when I do those submissions, that's still part of my Pigo experience, mm -hmm. right? It, it is. doesn't, when I first started doing Wayfarer, I felt like, oh my God, I got to get this done because it's taking away from my Pigo experience. But once I started really falling in love with it, that became part of my experience. And now I don't feel like I'm, missing out right i don't feel like i'm missing out on anything just because i'm doing a submission right um so I, I think that that's great and i think that you know with you and lachlan doing some live reviewing on monday nights um i think that that's probably where i can learn the most it's a nice stepping stone yeah going from i have no idea what i'm doing to hey this gives me some sort of criteria where i can I can visually see what other people are looking at. And it can be kind of intimidating from time to time if you've never done yes. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't want to make mistakes, right? Like, because a lot of times, like, well, I think that's what makes it fun with having you and Lachlan. You guys have this awesome juxtaposition of style and geographic places, you know? So it's like a lot of times I'll be like, ah, oh, that's clearly... Uh, you know, I should. I yeah, should that's vote not a gazebo. <laughs> or, it's got or, a roof and, and a seat underneath it. It's but, a gazebo. But then you'll 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 go the opposite way, and I'm like, oh man, I'm glad I didn't say that out loud. Like I feel like I made a mistake. So learning learning the criteria, I think, is is super important. But um, I figured, you know, I wanted to have you on not only to to talk about waste spotters, but to just start to get people acclimated that. Wayfaring can be part of the Pigo experience. It doesn't need to be something on the side. Like it could just be part of it. Absolutely. Because one person can literally change the landscape for a community. I mean, completely change the landscape. And I've I've seen people follow up with 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 the people with the community for way spotters where they're like, hey, I just got into this, and before I knew it, my park of two stops is now a park of you know, nine stops and, and, you know, this there's gyms and there's life in the park and people are, are starting to come. And he's like, and it's all, I've, I submitted everything. It, so it's awesome. The fact that you, one person can make such a, a big difference, I think is really, really, really cool. Right. So, well, um, do you want me to go through and give just a couple of quick tips on submitting? Yeah, a hundred percent. Go for it. So when submitting, obviously number one is going to be to to take and pass the Wayfair test, obviously, because you need to be um, a certified Wayfair in order to submit. The thing you want to do then is you want to keep your eyes open. So one of Niantic's tenants is exploration, right? You want to be walking around. You want to keep your eyes open and look at things. Look for murals. Look for things that 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 would be a good thing to spin in the game. What you want to do then, Ken and Adam, is you want to make sure you review the criteria. You want to understand what makes a good way spot. On the way on the on on Wayfair, there is a great section is you know what to submit and what not to submit. One of my big thing is don't submit trees. Please don't submit trees. I will make you I will make you cold <laughs> Listen, of the week, right? That tree. tree. That tree that you guys hadn't showed me in the Discord, no way. I that still have nightmares. Up. I still have nightmares. And, and then you want to use your resources, right? So if you listen to Wayspotters, we talk about IITC. We talk about the Wayfair app, Google Maps. You know, there's a lot of resources out there where you can look to see if there is an existing POI in the area. Um, when you get a little more advanced, you'll learn about S2 sales and how to make a gym. But in the beginning, you know, you're submitting POIs to the Lightship database, and that's important for future games. So if you see something you think is cool, submit it. If you need help learning if that's going to go in the game, reach out to me, reach out to Lachlan. We can talk to you. We can talk you through that. But use your resources. Number four, and probably I, I think all these are so super important, but take a quality picture. Make sure the picture is level with the horizon. Yes. Make sure there's no people in there. Another one of my pet peeves, no live animals. Like, don't put your dog in there. Like, take yeah. a good quality picture because it's going to be the photo disc that you're going to spin 
in Pokemon Go, and it's going to be the 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 what you're going to hack in Ingress, and you want a really good photo. Now you don't have to get out your Nikon camera and take some professional level. I mean, if you've got an iPhone or a Samsung, you're going to take a pretty darn good picture. But make sure that you know it's not in the shade or it's not the sun's glaring in it. Take a legit picture for the photo disc, uh, and then once you do that, use your description and your supplemental information wisely. Don't mention any of the Ni Niantic games in your description and don't beg for a POI. Those are things the community really needs to stop here. Yeah. Yes, this is this is a rock outside my house. The right. community really needs it. The Artemis Dragon says car picks rile me up. Yeah, when yes. you see when when you see like the top of the door panel, like when they don't even crop, they don't even like crop the door out. It's like, dude, I can see like your side view mirror in the photo. Like, come on, dude, get out of the car. Take a good picture. <laughs> Don't give the reviewer a reason to give you a one star. Like, think of it as if someone else is reviewing your submission, what do you want them to get from that? Like, when I submit something, like, I want people to feel what I was feeling when I was out there walking on the trail or whatever. I want them to, to put themselves in that position. And I like to write really colorful descriptions. And the last thing, Ken, I don't want to take How up colorful? Too like really <laughs> colorful, like like, I, I, like he's putting jokes in there. He's putting dad jokes in there. At absolutely any putting jokes in there, one hundred percent. And and the last thing, guys, is remember that the reviewer who's reviewing it might not be from your local area. They might be from a couple states away or even a country away if you use an upgrade. Um. So knowing, yeah, like Lachlan says in the chat, knowing local um information is important and understand that. If you use an upgrade and you are, I mean, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. If I use an upgrade on my submission, someone in Boise, Idaho might be reviewing my submission. So just understand that you can't use local jargon because someone might not understand it. And this is a global game and people are going to be visiting that POI from all across the world. So you want to make sure that it stands the test of time. So those are the quick tips from Jamal from the Waste Waters podcast. And I want to thank you guys for having me on Lord Up. And every Sunday, guys, Waste Waters, 9 o'clock Eastern Time AM drops. Please listen. Make sure you check out Wednesday, uh, Monday nights too, 11 p.m. You guys yep. doing some live reviews. I think that's probably the easiest way to get your feet wet of understanding the process. You guys do a phenomenal job of of welcoming in uh, new wayfinders, and uh, it's uh, you're doing it's you're a doing lot Ar of fun. Arceus's work. We appreciate it. But Jamal, thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Love that guy. That was Love awesome. That guy. Thank you, Jamal, so Love much. That guy. I figured I'd bring him in uh, just to, uh, to to spit some spit some knowledge because uh, I knew that this was going to be a good episode. Whenever there's like an event, our you know our viewership always goes up. So I figure post Go Fest, we're going to have a lot of people listening. Let's talk about Wayfair because uh, it is that important. Who did Jamal call a ho? What? What? Casa de Cubone? Who? What? What are you saying? <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Reviews from the Tub says, My bridge stop was also was worded as, The only way to access the eastern part of town that features many great restaurants. There's one restaurant, and it's not that good. <laughs> hey, man. But that, that'll tell. That's good for the reviewer, though. The reviewer sees that, and it's like, Wow, this is wow. very important to local culture. Yeah, I'll, oh, I'll give man. it a five-star, five-star. Let's go. Yes. But, Adam, <laughs> I say uh, we take a little break. Obviously, for the live stream audience, we'll, we'll, we'll be right here with you. But let's take a little break. When we come back, uh, we talk about this TCG uh, crossover event that's coming to Pigo. Okay. And uh, we that do sounds a good. Air, mega Aerodactyl raid guide and, and battle, battle party. party. What, do you say? Whoop, whoop. what do you say? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do it. Let's do All right. it. All right, everyone. We'll be back right after these We're back from our break. Thank hey you. Hey, everyone. everyone. <laughs> welcome back. You're welcome, Adam Lachlan, for opening your gift. Adam is distracted, so I'm like, yo, let's just get right back up in this. 
biatch. So uh, just a couple of little bits of uh, housekeeping before we get into the ass of the show. This podcast is powered by Patreon, and you can check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor. You can support this show for as little as $1 a month, and that $1 will get you access to our patron exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. I would pull it up right now and show, but, you know, the internet uncensored channel gets a little gets a little crazy Risque. sometimes so I'm, not, I'm not pulling it up <laughs> well we'll get i can see there's, there's lots of chats over here so yeah. like y'all are yes. talking and having a good time so yep. you all, all pa- are yep <laughs> awesome. phenomenal Fantastic. but all patrons are eligible to participate in our monthly Fantas- pigo and tcgo prize tournaments Registration is in the Discord, and we hope to see you there. Huge thanks to our gym leader patrons, Absolutely Ryan, Grant, Jamal, JD Mojo, Jojo, Magikarpe, Diem, Sue, Tish, TN Comics, Wiz, Turtle Power, and Big Za Minus. Special thanks to our executive producer, Paul Bot. Yo, Paul Bot scared the daylights out of me at GoFest. I'm walking around Red Bank, and all of a sudden I get this like double slap on my shoulders. I thought I was about to throw down. I turn around. It's Paul Bot. I was like, yo, I hadn't seen him in so long since like pandemic style. So it was really, really nice to see uh, to see Paul in person. That's awesome. But anyway, Adam, I think we should get right into this because this is exciting Let's stuff. And I know get into it. I know. Look at the hat, dude. First of all, can you just can you just admire this incredible Pikachu? Hat? <laughs> like like did we really need a T-shirt with Pikachu no. with the hat no. that I can barely see? Like no, at least give a big Pokeball or a TCG something. Like the, the shirt doesn't say anything. All right. Well, how anything. about this f- phenomenal looking AR photo here in the uh, in the key art, which is great. But now we've been talking about this on special conditions for a while. We we knew about this when they was it even Kanto? Like no, when did they release the Professor Willow card? That was a while ago, right? That was a while. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So we knew we knew that there was something going on, and it's kind of culminated in this, and I'll read it right from the release. It says, Trainers, we're incredibly excited to reveal more details about our collaboration with the Pokemon TCG. Trainers will be able to purchase the Pokemon TCG Pokemon Go expansion soon, featuring Pokemon Go-themed cards. And it's July 1st is the, uh, is the release date, so it'll be here um, before you know it. It says, as part of the collaboration, we're celebrating in Pokemon Go with Pokemon TCG crossover event. This event sees the debut of Pikachu wearing a Pokemon TCG hat. Adam loves it. And Mewtwo that knows Shadow Ball or Psy Strike may also appear in raid battles. Not may, it will. And what's more, if you're lucky, you might encounter Shiny Meltan. And that's not all. Read on. Okay. Pokemon debut. Wimpod and Galissapod in the game. So we just had Tyran- uh, Tyrant, we just had Amora, now we've got Wimpod. This is phenomenal. They're just kind of, you know, just throwing We're shit dropping at us new stuff all at the time. Us. Oh, and the event is from Thursday the 16th through the end of the month. So we're going to be swimming in Galissapod before the end of the uh, the event. But the biggie here is the return of Shiny Meltan. Um, I'm not a fan of these like shiny locked Pokemon that go back and forth of like it, it could be shiny, then it can't be shiny. I'm not a fan of that. But when it does come back, it's like you want to make sure that you can take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure. If you're open, you know, I, I, I've been sleeping on mystery boxes, so I haven't really opened them in a while. But what I recommend is having one ready to go and opened to be opened exactly at 10 a.m., on the 16th. I would wait that till 1001 can... just 1001 yeah <laughs> so you can maximize your time oh and Wimpod uh does need 400 candy to evolve so you know use some pineapps um, do you think do Meltan. you think it's it, it will have like a, an evasiveness similar to like Abra like a hundred percent flea or 99 percent flea rate or whatever if you miss if it doesn't catch I don't know yeah that would be interesting because I know in Sun and moon like you had to like tiptoe to like get it and if you didn't it would just like run away (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't know uh there will be a collection challenge along with this it says uh it's all going to be themed around pokemon that are going to be in the tcgo expansion or tcg expansion uh there's going to be six collection challenges of varying difficulties some harder than others just like collecting tcg cards is collecting tcg cards hard adam i think it's hard on the wallet it's That's hard on the it. wallet. It's hard on the wallet. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if like, you were just holy like shit, this buying, game is hard. I'm broke. If you were just buying random blister packs off the shelf, yeah. Some <laughs> are, some you, things are harder to find than others. 
You can complete them all to receive rewards of XP, a lure module, and an incubator. You'll also be able to encounter Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, and Meltan. Meltan. That's not all. Keep collecting going with three collection challenges available beginning on the 23rd. So it's like they're splitting the event up into the first week, second week. So just check out the blog. The link will be in the description. But uh, lots of Pokemon encounters here. And again, Pokemon that are featured in the TCG set. Uh, a lot of Kanto stuff, a lot of stuff that might not be too exceptionally exciting. I really think that this event is going to be about the If You're Lucky Pokemon, which is Chansey in the wild, Snorlax in the wild, Dragonite in the wild. Yo, Dragonite is always an exciting wild What about catch. Onyx? What about Onyx, man? You excited? Really? You're excited for Onyx? Yeah. I, dude, I struggled so hard to get people to do Mega Steelix raids. Like, I, that's why I didn't even mention Onyx. Well, you can't. I don't even care about you're, slacking. You're, you're giving people shiny. false information by not telling them. Other featured Pokemon will be Lunatone and Soul Rock. They will be featured now. Now, I'm hearing good things about this Soul Rock TCG card. The way that it functions, the engine around it looks seems pretty cool. Make sure you check out special conditions to learn about that. Um, and the research will be here as well with uh, the evolved forms of the Kanto starters and Dragonite and Snorlax in research. So that's that's exciting. I mean. Opening up research and getting, like, a shiny Charizard would be fucking fire. That'd be awesome. Uh, One-star raids, Chansey, Larvitar, Timber, and Wimpod. Send me all the Chansey. That's all I'm saying. Send all the all Chansey. Chansey. Three-star raids, Alolan, Executor, Snorlax, Dragonite, Slacking. And then we have Mewtwo and five-star raids. We'll talk about how that's rolling out in a second. And then you have, in Mega Raids, Mega Venusaur, Charizard X and Y, and Blastoise. So that's pretty exciting that we could have some different things hatching for Mega Eggs. But with Mewtwo, the first week, the 16th through the 23rd, that, that'll know Shadow Ball. And then the 23rd through July 1st, that'll know Psy Strike. So pretty exciting event here, Adam. Obviously, we'll talk about the TCG on Special Conditions, but how do you think this event is going to be... Uh, and does it feel like a TCG thing? Like, do you think that this hat is enough to, like, show off the TCG physically with your avatar? I don't think so. No. I I really just needed, like, this specific, like, I needed this pose. Like. Holding the cards? or Or just something like this, like. No, it would have been cool, like, dealing the cards out. Or like, like this, like. Yeah. And any yeah. pose that had to do with cards. Why is it okay? We have a TCG slash Pokemon Go crossover event, <laughs> yet we have no physical TCG <laughs> cards that are like in the trainer's hands or on the trainer's like clothing. Dude, there's there's Ooh. cards on Pikachu's hat, and they don't no. even look like Pokemon they, cards. They don't look like Pokemon cards. <laughs> I remember I was I'm like, very maybe upset it'll be about like, that. I go, maybe it'll be like the Mad Hatter's hat, but instead of like a Joker card or whatever, an Ace, you know, it'll be a TCG card <laughs> sticking out of the top hat. I was like, I don't know, not excited at all about this uh, about this Pikachu with a hat. But look, it's all about the shiny chase for me with costume Pokemon. So is what it is. I think it is a comprehensive event though. Raids, spawns, research, you know, uh and a new Pokemon, new shiny, all that kind of stuff. I mean, Chansey I'll be going after like fucking crazy and of course shiny Snorlax. You know, I still had the memories of that one running on me, so I still can't believe that. That, that. that I know. is it's so upsetting. So so sad. But uh, I think this will be a good event, but, uh, you know, we still have Adventure Week, so I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We could talk about this next week once we're uh, in it, once we're actually we're actually playing it. But make sure you check out Special Conditions so you can actually see these cards, uh, and you can check out our blog over on PokemonProfessor.com to take a look at some of the stuff up close. And actually, on the Special Conditions that we're recording right after this, we are featuring the art of Wimpod. Coincidental? I think not. I think so. I don't at all. Um, but it was a it was a good call by Adam to uh, to feature Wimpod in Art of the Week. But uh, Adam, as we're going a little long in the tooth here, I think we should just jump over to uh, to our next topic here, and that is going to be to build a battle party for Mega Aerodactyl, who we've had before. But now that Megas are kind of cool, I think more people are going to be interested in doing this, especially. Yes. Uh, to get the bonus for rock-type Pokemon like Shield On and 
Kranidos. Like this is a great opportunity to take advantage of those ancillary mega bonuses, like getting extra candy. These things take a lot of candy, and if you want to use a Bastiodon in PvP, you need you need the Hundo, and you need to max it out, right? So you need you're going to need all that candy. So Mega Aerodactyl is definitely a good thing. But Adam, we're live. How do you think we could pull off a whoop whoop? Or is it going to be all fucked? <laughs> I think we could do it. All right, battle well, part it. Ooh, 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 battle, battle part, part it. It. Ooh, ooh. it was all fucked up. I'm not even worried about it. That was terrible. That was fantastic. You just didn't do it twice. You did it once. I did it. What? Look, look at JT Valor. JT Valor is 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 in on the battle party. Whoop whoop. He was just like whoop whoop. But um, no, I I I think that this might be one of the first windows here that people are actually excited to do. Uh, some mega raids. So let's uh, let's get right into it. We're gonna actually look at two resources today. We're gonna look at both uh, Poke Battler and we're gonna look at GoHub because they have some good information on both that they do not share. So uh, first, Air, uh, Mega Aerodactyl is weak to Rock, Steel, Water, Electric, and Ice. And if you're currently Mega Evolving Pokemon or in that rotation. Take advantage of those mega, the mega buff for you and the party, let alone the extra candy. But, you know, you know, I'm going to have my my Gyarados mega evolved because I want to just level it up. But that'll definitely help with uh, with the water Pokemon to get that get that bonus. So um, what I like about Poke Battler is it is very comprehensive when it comes to these three sliders right here. And it's the ability to toggle on and off shadow Pokemon, legendary Pokemon and mega Pokemon. I typically leave them all on to start. I pick what I'm going to use and then I start turning them off. So let's just look at the uh, the overall list. Uh, you know what? Actually, before we do that, let's jump over to GoHub because this is some a bit of good information that they have here that is not on uh, on Poke Battler, and that is the 100% CP that you're going to be looking for. Uh, at level 20, you're going to look for a 1590, and at level 25, boosted in partly cloud or, or cloudy or windy weather, you're looking for 1988. So 1590 and 1988. But um, as per usual. Shadows dominate the PvE scene here. Um, I do not have a lot of Shadow Pokemon powered up. I have, of course, lots of Shadow Pokemon, but I don't invest in a lot of them. Same. So I, I've got a Shadow Metagross with good stats and all that good shit. It's just fucking like 700 CP. <laughs> like, I just haven't built into <laughs> it. So uh, just for the sake of our exercise here, you know, we'll take a look at it really quick. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off Shadow Pokemon. Thank you. And then the way Thank I you. look at it when I come back is Mega Pokemon. Well, obviously, you could only have one Mega Pokemon in your party, so it doesn't matter that the top three Pokemon here are Megas, Mega Blastoise, Mega Manectric, and Mega Gyarados, because you could only have one. So choose your Mega that you want and run with it. So I'm going to disable Mega Pokemon, and obviously, everyone's got Legendaries, and I'm sorry if you don't, but I'm grossly lumping people into the Everyone category. But now this looks a little bit more realistic and approachable when it comes to how you're going to build your party out. So let's run through a couple of the top counters. And then, Adam, you could let me know what you're going to bring. All right. Uh, number I one non-shadow, non-mega Pokemon is good old Metagross with Bullet Punch, Meteor Mash. Classic, classic Pokemon. Uh, number two, Zekrom, Charge Beam and Wild Charge. Number three, Kyogre with Waterfall and Surf. Again, I'm sure a lot of people are, have been raiding Kyogre over the last week or two. So a lot of opportunity to put that candy to work and put that Pokemon to work. And Adam, I know you're hyped on this one. Empoleon with Metal Claw and Hydro Cannon. What do you think of that? What? Why would I be Empo excited about Empoleon? Because don't you like this family? I like Primplup. Rhyperior also with SmackDown, Rock Wrecker, another staple in PVE. And then you've got a couple different dragons, but you got the steel side. Dialga with Metal Claw, Iron Head, uh, Therian Form, Thunderous, Raikou, Terrakion. It's a very, very diverse counter list because this thing has so much weakness. And if we look back up here, Rock, Steel, Water, Electric, and Ice. We'll go down a little further. I want to see what weak. else we got. Further down the list? Yeah, because you know that's where I'm living. 
All right, we have Jirachi with Charge Beam Doom Desire. Again, something like this is pretty cool because when you have electric moves and steel moves, both are super effective. Samurott with Waterfall Hydro Cannon. You got Zapdos, of course, if you have Shadow, run that. Mamoswine, there's your Swampert, there's Rampardos, Excadrill, Electivire for Alligator. The usual right, suspects. That's, yeah, the usual that's, suspects. That's, now we're good. Now we're good. But. Um, I put together a pretty diverse party, and I'm just going to like kind of pull it up here because I have it. Yeah, uh, but let me do it. mine because you told me you would do mine first. All right, mine go ahead. Go ahead. What, are you, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? What are you bringing? <laughs> so I'm starting my Megas with Mega Manectric. I will then follow that up with Metagross, um, Rampardos, Rhyperior, Swampert, and Electivire. All Hundos. The Hundo Squad. Oh in yeah. Full effect. The Hundo Squad is always in full effect for Adam. Oh yeah. That's that's a given. That is an absolute given. I have a little bit of a diverse party here. I will lead or run in the second slot, depending on who's in my party. Um with Mega Gyarados. I have regular old Metagross there. It's ninety eight percent shiny. I've got Zekrom in there. My Hundo level uh it's like a level forty five Kyogre now that I had some XL. I've got a 98 uh, Rhyperior, and then it doesn't matter who I put in the sixth slot because I'd be lying if I didn't say the sixth slot in all of my raids is dedicated to my buddy because I always drop my buddy in the anchor position just to get that extra buddy heart. <laughs> so I put Blissey in my battle party. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> whoop whoop it's so funny like sometimes like if we don't wipe you know the, don't kill the boss by the time he gets the blissey i'm like oh fuck blissey's going in <laughs> and it's like i know large just, margins like, in charge yeah, they're just like looking in the background like why is blissey in they're this like raid? who the like, heck brought around. blissey they're like oh yeah ken's in the raid it's definitely it's his buddy but uh yeah mega gyarados metagross zekrom Ky kyogre rhyperior and uh, large March Blissey squad. But, um, man, Adam, this has been a, uh, it's been a phenomenal week. It's been very exciting. There's been a lot of stuff, uh, just happening in the game. And, uh, I'm excited that GoFest is over because now we can set our sights, uh, on Seattle. Walking a bunch. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you Yo, were... definitely walking a bunch. Speaking of that, I'll plug this. Uh, join me every morning. I'm doing Instagram live, walk through the park, talk shit about Pokemon and life and all that good stuff. So make sure you join me over there. Uh, you can email us at info at luredup.com. You can call or text us at 732-835-8639. And make sure you check out pokemonprofessor.com, which is our site. So you can see our pretty faces and get uh the blog pages oh shout out to uh btw go cast and the roundtable chat top for this incredible uh pokemon go super show that we did last week um but you can also see our instagram feed my ugly mug shout out to the red bank crew here and uh you know you can listen to all the shows as well so definitely check all that stuff out uh adam is that a show that we do sounds it? like a show i mean we battle partied Talked about oh you know what we didn't talk about what spylight hour nose pass I was not picking my nose I was picking my nose pass very the carefully strange, the strange flesh colored shiny <laughs> it's like the weirdest freaking color it's listen so weird my son and I rollerbladed basically all the way downtown and all the way back um, I love we, that you use the word rollerbladed <laughs> rollerblade we roller <laughs> skated. Oh, shit. But thank you, everyone. What we're going to do here is we are going to take about a five-minute break here on the stream. We'll leave the stream running. We're going to do some magic in the back end, and we will be back and uh, jump over to special conditions for our live recording of special conditions. But for the Pokemon Go world and Lured Up, thank you, everyone. We really appreciate it. Keep training, trainers. We'll see you all next week. Bye.